hands clapping and give him your very best praise. Open your mouth. Let the devil hear you praising God. Let your trouble hear you praising God. Let your circumstance hear you praising God. Come on, let me join with me tonight as we let God arise in this sanctuary. Lord, rise among us tonight. Do whatever you want to do in this place and touch whoever you want to touch. Deliver whoever you want to deliver, Lord, and heal whoever you want to heal. But have your way, Jesus. Have your way in this place. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you went through to get here, but I'm so glad you made it. Come on, tell him I'm so glad you made it. The devil said you won't go make it, but he's a liar. You're here, you're here. You're still here. Out of everything you've been through, you're still here. The Lord has kept us. And I honor him tonight. What a privilege it is to be standing in this sanctuary, to stand in the pulpit of this great mighty man of God who is, who is my friend, your pastor, your leader. He is my friend, my brother. And I thank God for the genuine anointing that is on his life. It is very real. Y'all, I said it is real. Demons tremble when he takes a microphone. Because of the power. I don't even think he knows that there's such a force that comes when he opens his mouth. And you are so blessed to be a part of this congregation. High five your neighbor. Say, I'm glad I'm here. I know you are too. The Lord... Has blessed you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. I bring you greetings from my husband from the river. We celebrate what God is doing in this place. Just remain standing for a moment, if you will. Take your Bibles. Go with me to the book of Exodus tonight for the word of the Lord. The book of Exodus is where we're going. I don't know who I came to preach to, but I do know all day long. I have not been able to get this out of my spirit. So I said, Lord, I'm just going to preach it. And let it fall where it may. Anybody hungry in the house? Thank the Lord tonight. Exodus chapter 3 is where we're going to go. I'm going to skip around a bit, so if you'll just follow me, you won't be lost. Exodus chapter 3. I honor his lovely first lady in her absence. I thank God for Sister Melinda. Why don't you clap your hands? You can't celebrate him and not celebrate her. Because they're a team, you know, they're a team. I thank God for their whole entire family. Exodus chapter 3, look at your neighbor. If they don't have a Bible, just look at them and say, what's up with that? (laughs) Now, where is your Bible? Just say, what is up with that? Where is your Bible? (laughs) No, don't make them mad, just share with them. Exodus 3, we're going to begin reading at verse Nine, if you have to say amen. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Verse 19. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even with a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and I will smite Egypt with all of my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, uh, when I get through smacking him around a little bit, he will then let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of their enemies. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters. In other words, it's going to be so much that you're going to have to not be able to just carry it yourself. You're going to look over somebody coming up after you and say, here, I'm going to bless you. There's, there's a blessing you're going to pass on to your sons and your daughters. And, and the reason you're going to be able to do that is because you are going to spoil the 
enemy. You're going to spoil the Egyptians. And I, verse 21 says, will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Turn to your neighbor on the right and say, neighbor, don't you dare come out of it empty handed. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, after everything you've been through, you better not come out of it empty handed. Spirit of the Lord, I thank you. Speak in this place tonight and say whatever you want to say. Have your way in here, God. Encourage every man, every woman, every boy and every girl. Speak up in this place, God. You're the only one that can talk to all of us and say something different to each of us at the same time. You are bad like that, and that's why we praise you, and that's why we exalt you, and that's why we love you. Let your word flow in this place tonight. Have free course in this church, and without fail, we'll never be confused to give the glory to. We will always give it to your name. Thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory. In Jesus' name, somebody that loves him, hold your head back, clap your hands together, and tell God, thank you. Oh, you better tell him thank you like you mean it. Thank you. Bless your name, God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tell somebody on your way down, don't you come out empty-handed. Don't you dare come out of it empty-handed. My text today is really the beginning of the fulfillment of a prophecy that God gave to Abraham back in Genesis 15. He said to Abraham in Genesis 15, he said, your people shall be enslaved for 400 years and afterward, uh, I can stop right there because it, it, it is just, sometimes it's just good to know there's going to be an afterward. Have, have you ever been in the middle of something and said, Lord, I don't even know if I'm coming out of this, but if I can ever just get a word that I am going to come out, I don't even have to know when, I don't even have to know how, I don't even have to know where, I just got to know I am coming out. He said, afterward, uh, they, they shall come out, and they shall come out with great substance. Notice he did not say that they might come out, or perhaps they will come out, but he said they, they are going to come out, and they are going to come out with not measly substance, not pitiful substance, but they are going to come out with great substance. And it is not going to be their talents or their abilities or their skills or who they know that causes them to have this great substance. The thing that is going to give them something substantial, something powerful, something valuable, something that is touchable, something that is tangible is going to be great Affliction. I know we don't want to hear that, but, but that's exactly how it goes. It, 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 in order to get great substance, you got to be willing to go through great affliction. Because there is a process to greatness. I said there is a process to greatness. Everybody wants to be great, but there is a process to greatness. You don't just leap over into greatness. You walk into greatness one faithful step at a time. It, 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 is, it is not easy. The, the, the road that leads you into greatness, is, it's not an easy path. And if the truth be told, the road uh, uh, to success is many times paved with suffering. And in other words, sometimes if you're going to be great, you gotta, you, you gotta learn how to wipe your tears. And having done all to stand, you gotta learn just to stand still. Sometimes you gotta be willing to have your feelings hurt if you want to be great. Sometimes you got to be willing to li be lied on if you want to be great. Sometimes you got to be rejected if you want to be great. Sometimes you got to let people look at you like you're crazy and roll their eyes at you and judge you and break your heart and walk off and leave you for dead if you want to be great. Because the Bible said that you got to endure hardness as a good soldier. And it's only after you have suffered a while. I said it's only after you have suffered a while that he will establish you and make you perfect. So if you're wondering who's really going to, God is really going to greatly bless, just look at whoever's going through great persecution. The next person that God is going to raise up is the person that is going through hell. Because persecution always positions you for promotion. 
I'm going to say that again. I said persecution, it all, it ain't nothing but the, the Lord positioning you for promotion. So you need to know that if you are battling rejection or betrayal or jealousy or hatred, that it ain't nothing but a setup in your life. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, God set me up. He set, set me up. He's setting me up. If you don't believe that, you need to ask Joseph. Joseph will tell you. I love the story of Joseph. He, Joseph was his father's favorite. You know him. His father gave him the coat of many colors. And uh, he was the boy that was highly favored and highly hated at the same time. You do know that it's possible to be highly hated and highly favored at the same time. As a matter of fact, it is that favor that causes folk to hate you. Uh, as a result of the touch of God that was on his life, as a result of his relationship with his father, his brothers despised him and they were eaten up with jealousy. Because you do know that not everybody in the family is happy about your blessing, don't you? Oh, if you don't know that, let me tell you that right now. Let me give you a little heads up. Not everybody in the family is happy about what God is doing in your life. There are just some people, I don't care how much you love them. I don't care how much you reach out to them. I don't care how much you try to be their friend. They are going to misunderstand everything you say. They're going to misjudge everything you say. Everything you do, everything you say, they're going to misjudge you. And if you're not careful, you will give yourself a nervous breakdown. You'll have a heart attack. You'll go nuts trying to justify, trying to... Well, I didn't mean it like that. No, you misunderstood me. No, that's not what I... I was saying it all. If you're not careful, you'll kill yourself and you'll lose sleep and you'll walk the floor over something that's stupid because what you really need to do is you really need to cut them jokers off in your life because it is not you they hate. It is the favor of God that they hate. Can somebody tell them I got favor? Tell them I don't care if you like it or not. I got favor. They are jealous, they are envious, they are hateful, they are spiteful. And when they saw the Father put the coat of many colors on your life, when they saw Him open doors and make ways where there was no way, when they saw Him create a way for you, when they saw Him bless you and anoint you, they could not deal with it. Because anytime God steps over top of you to bless somebody next to you, it'll get on your nerves. You got to be real mature to watch God bless somebody else and not bless you. Oh, just hit your neighbor. Tell them don't lie. You know it bothers you. Don't lie. You know it bothers you. Don't sit up here and act like it don't bother you. They were jealous. They were so jealous that the that they sought to get rid of him because when you're really blessed people don't want to look at you they don't want to see you and if I don't have to see you then I don't have to see the goodness of God in your life and so they decided to get rid of him and they threw him in a pit and they lied on him dipped his coat in the blood sold him into slavery got rid of him but he survived it all because favor always arrives on two feet I don't care what you do to it you can push it down you can make fun of it you can knock it to the Side, favor will always arrive on two feet. All in favor in this room, say I. I'm standing in the middle of favor. Everywhere the boy went, he was hated because of the favor of God that was on his life. The good thing about it is that I don't care how much folk hate you, there is only so much that they can do to you. They may take your coat, but they cannot take your favor. Take whatever you want. You cannot get the touch of God that is on my life. Take my office, but you still can't have my favor. Take my job, but you can't have my favor. Take my position and my title, but you cannot have my favor. Whatever you want, just take it. I don't care whatever you can have it because when the favor of God is on your life it doesn't matter where they put you you're still going to prosper they can put you in a pit and you'll prosper they can put you in a prison and you'll prosper the more they persecute you the more God will grow you the more they divide you the more God will add to you the more they take from you the more God will multiply you because favor kids are like babies kids we don't die we for 
yourself. Don't try to vindicate yourself. Don't try to change anybody's mind. Honey, the very fact that they hate you ain't nothing but a sign that God is getting ready to bless your life. And the reason some of y'all don't really praise him is because you ain't never been really been hated. But if you ever really been hated, see, when you are the somebody, I said, when you are the somebody that everybody said would never be anybody, and God makes a liar out of all of them, honey, it will make you praise him. You will praise him. If you ain't got no music, you'll praise him. If you ain't got no singers, you'll praise him. You'll sing. If you can't sing, you'll laugh. If you can't laugh, you'll run. If you can't run, you'll holler. But you will find a way when he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy. You will find a way to open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. And if my praise gets on your nerves, you have to excuse me. Because see, some of, there are some of us in here tonight that we have to praise him because our whole life is a miracle. We didn't have the education. We didn't have the support. And we didn't have the backup. And we didn't have the finances. And we didn't have the hooks up, hook up. And we didn't have the connections. We got where we are by nothing but the grace of God. And we didn't play silly games to get here. And we didn't compromise our character to get here. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I got to praise him. Because it was nobody but Jesus. Tell somebody next to you, God bless me. I ain't going to hide it. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. But I'm glad about it. I'm not going to apologize for it. Because I didn't do it. God did it for me. And any time, any time, any time that you're hated. Any time that you're rejected and abandoned and betrayed. And you live through it. It ain't nothing but a sign that God is about to bless your life. It's a sign that he has selected you for success. It's a sign that he has sovereignly set you apart and put his touch upon your life. Because there are others that ain't been through half of what you've been through. And they are already dead and gone. They are not here to talk about it. The very fact that you are still here. The very fact that you made it. It ought to be a sign to you that it is the Father's good will to give you the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you ever wondered what a survivor feels like. You ought to shake my hand. Shake my hand. Children of Israel, they were survivors. They worked for 400 years without a penny recompense. They began suffering from the imbalances of slavery to the point that their dignity was affected, that their direction was affected, that their their, their sense of destiny began to be shaken. They, they were a captive people. They were a nation of slaves. They were desperately in need of an emancipator. Uh, they, they were the people of God, yes, but they were going through great pain. I said they were the people of God, but they were going through great pain. Anytime the enemy inflicts great pain upon your life, it is a sign that God is getting ready to give you some great substance. When those unrelenting, you know, ridiculous blows start coming against your life. Anybody know what I mean? You know, because life doesn't wait for you to catch your breath. It just hits you. And then while you're trying to catch your breath, here comes another one. Here comes another one. And, and, and when that happens to me, after three or four or five, I just stand back and say, hey, okay. I see what's going on here. God is really trying to offer me another level in my spirit. And so I'm going, hang on. I'm going to hold on and I'm going to believe God because you can always tell what kind of blessing you're going to walk in tomorrow by the hell that you've had to walk through today because the Bible said if the thief be caught he's got to return to you sevenfold tell your neighbor I'm about to get the mother alone God told Abraham he said I'm going to bring them out and I'm going to bring them out with great substance. So, 
So their deliverance, uh, it was a set of fact. God was going to deliver them. He said, I, I am going to deliver them. How, how I, I am going to make their enemy bless them. However, before I deliver them, I am going to make their enemy hate them. See, God was forewarning them because he wanted them to know, he wanted his people to know that the years of oppression and the year, years of injustice and the years of a slavery and the years of opposition Position. It was not an accident. He's letting them know. I'm letting them go through some pain, but I'm letting them go through pain on purpose. See, I can deal with purposeful pain. It is that purposeless mess that I can't deal with. God said, I'm going to bring you out and I am going to eman emancipate you. But before I do, I'm going to turn your life upside down. I'm going to turn it inside out. All hell, not some hell, but all hell is going to break loose in your life. I'm going to turn Pharaoh's heart against you. But he said, I don't want you to panic because it ain't nothing but a, ch a test. I'm going to teach you faith by talking to you and, and working with you through this battle that you are. In. And you know the story. God spoke to, 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 uh, to Moses. He said, go down there, tell Pharaoh. I said, let my people go. Moses walks down there like a big dog and says, God said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, who in the world are you talking to me like that? Get out of my face. And you know the story. He began to increase their workload. He wouldn't give them the straw that they needed to build the bricks. He, he said, load them down. He went to their taskmaster and said, load them down. Make them sweat. Make them get their own straw. Make them get their own uh, whatever they got to have to make the bricks. He said, I want them to sweat. And, and, and I want you to make it hard on them. Look what is happening to not the enemy. This is happening to the people of God. Things are going from bad to worse. But God is still in the middle of it all. Don't be surprised when things go from bad to worse. They were they went from bad to worse for Joseph but God was still in the middle of it the same thing happened to Job same thing happened to Daniel same thing happened to Paul same thing happened to Jesus it went from bad to worse but God was in the middle I don't know who I came to tell this to but God said to tell somebody even though it looks like it's getting worse rather than getting better that does not mean that I have forgotten you and that does not mean that I have forsaken you I came to tell you God said sometimes you gotta go in your prayer closet and remind yourself I don't care what it looks like God is on my side he is in this thing with me sometimes you gotta lay hands on your own self and encourage yourself in the Lord look at somebody and tell him God he is going to bless me it may not look like it and I may not feel like it but these light afflictions which are but for a moment will be working for me a far more exceeding eternal weight in glory I know it might look like I should curse God and die but why should I curse him and die when I can bless him and live no thank you I'll wait on the Lord for they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Run and not be weary. Sometimes you got to go in your prayer closet. See, I hope you pray for me. But should you ever forget to pray for me? Should you ever get mad at me and decide not to pray for me? I got this, okay? I'm going to be all right. Because I know how to go in there and say, you shall live. <laughs> And not die. Wrap your mind up in prayer. Wrap your mind up in praise. Wrap your mind up in purpose. Clap your hands and tell God yes. Lord, I say yes. I will serve you. I will praise you. I will love you. Despite Pharaoh's decrees, something is on the verge of breaking loose in my life. You got to know it. You got to know that despite what Pharaoh is trying to do, some of you are on the edge. You're on the verge of the promises of God breaking loose on the left and on the right in your life. And I came tonight to push you over the edge. That's all I... But push on your neighbor. Tell him you're going over. 
Oh, God, have mercy, Jesus. You're going over the edge. God said, I'm going to make them hate you. And I'll turn around and make them bless you. That same slave master that enslaved you is going to turn around and bless you. Why? Because I will give this people favor. Anytime you got favor, you got access. Access to stuff you shouldn't have. Access to stuff you don't deserve. Access to stuff you're not qualified for. Access to stuff you can't even explain. Have you ever just walked into something that, whoo, you couldn't even explain it. It was just the favor of the Lord that was on your life. All you know is that favor got it for you. You didn't get it for yourself. God just pushed open the door and pushed you all the way through it. And there you are standing. You know you ain't qualified to have that job. You know you aren't qualified to have the house. You know you're not qualified to have that car. But favor got it for you. Tell your neighbor, favor got it for you. You are in a place called favor And you didn't have to kiss up to nobody to get there And you didn't have to sleep with nobody to get there You got there because God said the heart of the king is in my hand And I will turn it in your direction Favor He told the children of Israel He said I'm getting ready to bless you I'm getting ready to favor you. Because I'm getting ready to make a transfer. He said, I've been laying up some treasures for those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Got some stuff laying up for you. And he said, you just go walk into it. I'm going to put it into your hands. Kind of like Ruth did when she stumbled onto Boaz's field. You know, she just kind of stumbled onto that field. She wasn't a reaper, but she got behind one that was. And whatever they did, she did. And what she didn't know is that Boaz was looking out the window. And Boaz said, who is that? They said, well, she, her name is Ruth. She's related to Naomi, who is related to you. He said, hmm, okay. Uh, well, tell, tell them, tell the guys. I said, number one, don't touch her. So here she is under divine protection, and she don't even know it. Number two, number two, he said, now tell them, I said, to pull some blessings down. Tell them, I said, to pull them down and leave her some handfuls on purpose. I don't even want her to have to work for this next level. Now she's under divine provision. Lord have mercy. God, just let it fall into her hand. Why don't you shake hands with two people? Tell them something getting ready to fall into my hands. Coming your way. I said it's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. It's going to fall into your hands. I said it's going to fall into you. Open your hands and say, let it fall, Jesus. The business is falling. The money is falling. The favor is falling. The jobs are falling. The openings are falling. The houses are falling. Lord, let it fall. Send it down, Lord. Send it down, Lord. Send it down, Lord. The closer that they got to freedom, hear this. This is for somebody in here tonight. The closer that they got to freedom. The more the oppression increased. I said the closer that they got to freedom. The more the oppression began to increase. See trouble ought to tell you something. Trouble ought to let you know that when, when, when trouble is at its worst. You ought to know that God is about to be at his best. God said I'm going to get you out of this. But before. But before. Can you believe he's got the nerve to say this to them. After they've come through everything they've come through. He said. He said, I'm going to get you out, but before I do, I'm going to take you through a tight place. And you're like, God, I don't think it can get any tighter in my life. Hence, the Bible said, God led the people around by the wilderness to the Red Sea. They followed the cloud by night. They followed the pillar of fire by day. 
uh, 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 by night and the cloud by day. It, it led them into the victory, yes, and it led them into freedom. But before it led them into the victory and into the freedom, it led them into a tight place. Have you ever found yourself in a tight place? Worshiping from a tight place. Living in a tight place. Working in a tight place. Praising God in a tight place. Preaching from a tight place. Encouraging other folk. But you're in a tight place yourself. It is uncomfortable. But I want you to know that a tight place. It is part of the process. And church we have got to understand the process. We got to understand that sometimes. In order to get that. I have got to go through this. And I can't pray it away. And I can't fast it away. And I can't confess it away. All I can do is hold on and believe God to take me through the tight place. The key to living in success is to drinking whatever cup. I know the cup is bitter sometimes, but whatever cup the Father gives you, open up your mouth and swallow the process. It might be bitter, but tell somebody it has got to be swallowed. God has led them into a tight place. The Bible calls it Baal Zephon. Baal Zephon was a perfect geographical cul-de-sac. Look at God now. He's just led his people right into a dead end. Have you ever felt like God led you right to a dead end? Led him right into a dead end. Straight into the jaws of a predicament. Now they are hemmed in on both sides. The, to the north there is the enemy fortress. To the south is the desert. To the east is the Red Sea, and Goshen is to the west, which represents their past. And while there are times that I, I, I may not always know exactly where I am going, I do know where I ain't going. Touch somebody and tell them I ain't going back that way. The children of Israel have come through and God has brought them through but now they are in a tight place. They are cornered in a cul-de-sac. God has led them to, I didn't say the enemy, I said God has led them into a vulnerable place. He has led them into a place where there is no human way of escape. And it, the Bible said out of that place, the sons of God began to cry out unto the Lord. Tell your neighbor but you might have to pray your way out of this one. Oh, I know they don't want to hear it, but tell them you might have to pray your way out of this one. There are some times that God will let things go in our life just to get us to turn our face back toward Him. The Bible said, out of that tight place, they opened up their mouth and they began to cry out to the Lord because there's something about trouble that'll make you cry out. Something about trouble that'll make you holler. Something about trouble that'll make you do things you said you would never do. For if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, repent from their wicked ways, then, 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 I will hear from heaven and I will open the doors for them. I'll release the job for them. I'll release the promotion for them. If my people, enough trouble, Make a, even an atheist say, oh God. They could hear the enemy hot on their trail. The enemy was coming up behind them. They were trying to get through, but they could hear. Ain't it a mess when you hear the sounds of what you just got free from coming up behind you? Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, y'all have forgot what it was like to come out of some stuff. But have you ever come out of some stuff and, and you start hearing the sounds of your past threatening to overtake your future? They can hear the sound of the enemy coming up behind them. And they are trapped between the devil and the deep red sea. And they are in an inescapable dilemma. But tell your neighbor, God is going to get you out of this. He told them in Exodus 3, he said, I have seen you and I have heard you and I know where you are and I know how you feel and I know what you're facing and I am going to deliver you. Tell your neighbor, help is on the way. He said, I want you to stand still. Lord, you got to be kidding. The enemy is chasing me and you are asking me to stand still. 
He said, I want all of your self-help efforts to cease. I want you to understand that this is a job for me in your life. I want you to understand that if I don't do it, it ain't going to get done. I want you to resist the urge to move in your flesh and to operate in your flesh and to get out of it in your flesh. He said, I want you to stand still and I want you to fear not because if you will stand still and fear not, you will see the salvation of the Lord your God. And I don't know who I came to talk to, but I came to tell somebody the battle that you are in, it is not yours, but this battle is the Lord's. Encourage your neighbor and tell him the battle belongs to the Lord. All of their life, I said all of their life, they have had to fight their own battles. But this time it would be different. This battle was about their enemy and their God. And all they had to do was stand still. And watch the hand of God move in their life. And God took the cloud that was before them, put it behind them, and shielded them from their enemy. For thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Does anybody know God to be a shield? In a storm, he'll shield you. In the rain, he'll shield you. When you hate it, God will shield you. Oh Lord, are a shield round about me. And in a moment's notice, their God stepped in and turned their situation while they were standing in a tight place. God sent an east wind and that east wind blew every drop of water that was between them and their destiny. It blew every obstacle out of their way. It blew every hindrance out of their way. And I came tonight to tell somebody that God is about to send a wind that's going to blow every enemy out of your way. He's going to blow it out of your path. Everything that said it was going to trip you. Everything that said it was going to delay you. God said, I'm about to blow in your life. And when I blow, it will move. I said, it will move. Tell your neighbor, it will move. He blew and he created a road. I love this. Because he created a road for Israel. And when their enemy tried to step in, what God had created for them. It swallowed them up. And Israel's road became Egypt's grave. Because what God has for me. Tell your neighbor it is for me. What was death to one was life to another. God blew until even their enemies said, we need to back up because the Lord fighteth for them. You better be careful who you touch because God will move until even your enemies will say, I can't touch them. I better shut my mouth. I came to tell somebody that God is about to reverse some things. He's about to blow some obstacles out of your way. Things are getting ready to change. Things are getting ready to shift. God said I am going to bless you now because of what you went through then for all the hell for all the headaches for all the things you lost for all the sacrifices for all of man's manipulation God said to tell you I saw every last bit of it I kept records I was watching even stuff you forgot. God said I remember and I saw your heart. I saw your attitude. I saw your response. I watched you take a licking and keep on serving me and keep on praising me and keep on loving me and keep on moving in ministry. God said I saw it. Even things you forgot about. God said go in there and tell him there is going to be a great recompense because God said I watched it all and I watched how in the midst of it you kept on serving me. You refused to get bitter. You refused to get vindictive and because of that God said I will bless your life and when I bless you those enemies that are chasing you you shall never see them again. 
touch your neighbor tell him no more no more what's been chasing you you will never have to look at it again y'all ain't telling nobody just grab your neighbor and say god is about to shift things in your life i feel the holy ghost and god said to tell somebody i am about to open a window get ready get ready because i am about to open a window in your life and i'm gonna pay you back for all of your faithfulness for all of your commitment you held on even when folk laughed at you you held on when they told you you were crazy you held on when they told you they were using you but you were doing it as unto the lord and god said because you put your time in payday is today i said payday is today shake hands with three people tell them don't come out of it empty-handed tell them don't come out don't come out give your stuff back i said give your stuff back get your kids stuff back too give it all back for the kingdom of heaven suffering violence and the violent take it back for don't wait for it to come back you gotta take it back don't negotiate with the devil don't settle for less it ain't up for discussion no arbitration for me i've been through too much i cried too much i fought too hard i got up too many times i pushed tears back too many times and i know that god is about to bless my life shake hands with somebody tell them god is about to bless you you know it praise him like you know it come on son payday it's today hey i know you can't tell by looking at some of us that we've been through anything but trust me we've been through hell and high water but god preserved us does anybody know god has preserved you the reason i didn't kill myself was god preserved me the reason i didn't kill nobody else was because i know i don't look like it but you weren't there you don't know what shape i was in that's why i got to praise him but there is a story behind my praise i'm not emotional i'm just grateful because i understand i should have flipped out i should have been crazy but god held my mind your joy back get your peace back get your victory back get your money back get your stuff back and don't wait to get to heaven to do it if he can save you now he can bless you now Somebody say now, now Lord, now Lord, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I dare you to believe God for right now. I need prosperity and I need it. I need healing and I need it. I want my breakthrough and I want it. Thank <laughs> you.
something you did back then is getting ready to come up and bless you right now. God is getting ready to bless me and I don't care who likes it and I don't care who is happy and I don't care who is not happy because no weapon from the kids
And when the children of Israel came through the Red Sea, they were loaded down with so much stuff. Loaded down with so much stuff.